Okay, it's very recording. All right, so, um, so I want to talk about solution curves. Okay, so which chapter is this? Um, it is somewhere. I believe it's in chapter one or chapter two somewhere. I think chapter one. Yeah. By the way, the notes that I have here is coming from another source, like from another, from like some older notes. So. A lot of times, this like this book kind of a little bit skips around a little bit, and it's a little more. Um, they merge a lot of the techniques together sometimes. Okay. So let's see. So let's talk about solution curves. Okay, so solution curves are basically it's a way to, uh, without actually physically solving the problem, right? We can get an idea of what the solution will look will look like. Okay. Okay, so an ODE, right, ordinary differential equation, which okay. so which the independent variable does not appear. Is said to be autonomous. So you've probably seen this, well, you'll see this term a lot in, in various differential equations. Okay. Right, so, all right, so we're going to use let x, we're going to let x denote the uh, independent variable. Then an autonomous first order. Right? So we haven't talked about higher order yet. So first order, oh, first order linear OBE can be written as this. So that's sort of the what's called the nominal way to write uh, or to express a uh, first order ODE using this notation. This is just the same, right, as saying this. So dy, right, so dy dx equals to f, f of y. Okay. So that's sometimes they'll write in this way or this way. Okay. But the point here is that you have your operator, right, your differential operator equals to some function in terms of y. Okay. okay, so there's a lot of applications um, that are particularly in this form, okay? So let's look at, so here's, let me give an example of one of those, okay? So an example of this uh, would be something like, like this. One plus y squared, right? So you have dy dx equals to some function in terms of the dependent variable. Okay. So that is an example of a autonomous first order ODE. Okay. okay. Here's an example of something that's not. Okay, that's that would not be an autonomous, okay? So not autonomous, right? because this is a function of terms of x and y. Okay. So why are these important? Well, 
we're going to see that with this form, uh, we can talk about uh, basically uh, we can talk about the solution curves for these. Okay. And so I want to show some show you some other examples. Okay, these are more uh, for the applications. So in this case, we're letting uh, we're letting t. Okay, so we're letting t be the uh, letting t be our independent variable. Okay, so that means this. Right. This is an example of a of a logistic of a logistic uh, model. Okay. Everything here. Right, everything here on this side is dependent on P, P being the, being the dependent variable, right? Okay. So logistic, so if you, I think in chapter three, I talk about this. So the logistic function basically is a population model that has, right, that we're assuming some kind of carrying capacity. Right? So in fact, we're gonna take a closer look at this. We're gonna actually look at the slope fields for this. Okay. Another one is something like this. Right. This is what this is the equation of. This is basically Newton's law of cooling right? or heating, depending on what K is doing. Again, so you have your differential here. This is dependent, right? This is all dependent on. Okay. And obviously, you have the, uh, the standard growth of the K model. So that one's also dependent on just right the right hand side is P, right? It's the part you can okay. So a lot of the applications, especially specifically the first order applications, are basically autonomous. Okay. All right. So let's define. Uh, so now what we're going to do is define the critical points. So let's say a closer look at critical points here. Are you? That's okay. Okay, so again, our focus is going to be in this autonomous differential equation. And we have to assume that uh, we're going to assume that the function here is continuous. Okay. And that kind of y is also continuous. Okay. Oh, is there a classic here? 
Is there a class in here? Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, they didn't tell me that. What time does it start? Six. Six o'clock? Okay. Six. Six. Six um, thirty? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. So, okay. Um, what we'll do is we'll have to, oh, let me see who it is. Yes. 